once upon a time there lived a girl named Akuna. Akuna lived alone with her poor old mother in a distant village close to the popular Idu forest. She was a very hard-working and obedient girl who her mother loved so much. All her sisters were married, leaving only her to look after their poor old mother. One day, Akuna was heading to the farm to pluck some herbs for her mother when she saw some girls in the distance beating up a small girl by the bush path. The small girl was a poor beggar named Ndidi who did not have a home of her own as her parents died in a ghastly fire accident which engulfed their home leaving her homeless with nothing. Ndidi would beg the villagers for food to survive and many who knew about her story were sympathetic towards her. This was however not the case with the village bullies, especially Chioma, who at every given opportunity would read Ndidi of all she had got, not minding that she was a poor orphan trying to survive. When Akuna caught sight of the bullies trying to extort Ndidi, she intervened and saved Ndidi from their hands. Chioma saw it as an insult for Akuna to intervene in her business, so she vouched that Akuna would pay for her actions. Many weeks later, Akuna heard that her late father's only piece of land, where she and her mother farmed to survive, was about to be sold by her father's only brother. Akuna hurriedly rushed to the land to stop the sale, and when she got there, she met the man who wanted to buy the land. She explained her mother's situation to the man and the fact that the land was their only source of livelihood. The man on hearing this rescinded on his decision to buy the land and this angered her uncle who stormed out of the land threatening to deal with Akuna. Akuna was so fearless as she despised injustice and always stood up for what was right, but this all came at a price. One night, whilst Akuna was walking back home from the stream, she felt something splash on her face. She began to feel a burning sensation in her eyes and screamed, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, as she winced in pain. She screamed for help, but no one came to her rescue. After a few hours, her poor old mother noticed that she had not returned from the stream, so she went out in search of her. Old and frail, she walked gently towards the village stream, and as she was approaching a turn, she heard a faint cry coming from the distance. Akuna, is that you? she said, as Akuna screamed and replied, Mother, I cannot see. Her mother's heart began to palpitate, as she could not understand why her daughter could no longer see. She walked a short distance and saw her daughter crying helplessly. She gradually led her home, and Akuna was in so much pain. All efforts to see through her eyes were futile, and her mother did not know what to do. By morning, on seeing the pain that her daughter was going through, Akuna's mother took her to the popular village herbalist to see if he could make Akuna see again. For days, the herbalist tried all he could, but Akuna's sight was not restored. Soon, News of Akuna's condition spread around the village and a very rich man in the village decided to pay Akuna a visit at the herbalist's hut. He asked Akuna if she had an idea of who could have done this to her and Akuna replied with a no, stating that it was dark when it happened. 
Akuna stayed at the herbalist hut for weeks, but still, her sight was not restored. So she decided to go back home and live her new life as a blind girl. Every day, the rich man would visit Akuna's hut to check on her and her mother and this went on for a very long time, till one very night. Akuna was deep in sleep when she saw a girl in the forest who told her that for her to regain her sight, she had to wash her eyes three times with the water from the famous Inkisi River. When Akuna woke up, she told her old mother the dream she had and her mother volunteered to go fetch the water. Akuna refused but her mother insisted and promised to return early as the river was many miles away. Akuna stayed all alone in her mother's hut, waiting for her to return. After so many hours, her mother had not returned and this got Akuna worried as her mother was too old and frail. I hope nothing has happened to my mother, she said as she began to panic. Several hours passed and still her mother had not returned. So Akuna got up with a walking stick and began to find her way to Nkisi River. The rich man was on his way to Akuna's hut when he sighted her from a distance. What are you doing outside all alone? He asked as she told him that she was going in search of her mother who set out early that morning to fetch some water from the famous Nkisi River and had not returned. Akuna was so worried as she feared something would have happened to her mother. She pleaded with the rich man to assist her to the riverside and they both set out on the journey. A few minutes later, they arrived the river bank and Akuna's mother was nowhere around the river. Akuna then did as the girl in her dream instructed and washed her eyes three times with the water from the Nkisi river and surprisingly her eyes opened. I can now see, Akuna screamed as tears of joy began to pour out of her eyes. This joy was however short-lived as Akuna worried for her mother. The rich man was shocked and asked how Akuna was able to see. It was then that she narrated her dream to him. The rich man then suggested that her mother might have taken another part home that they should return to see if she was home. They journeyed back to Akuna's hut, but still her mother was nowhere to be found. After a few hours, the rich man left for his own house and Akuna waited all through the night for her mother. In the early hours of the morning, Akuna heard a sound outside her hut. She rushed to check who it was and lo and behold, she saw her old mother walking towards their hut. What happened to you, mama? She asked with a shaky voice as she led her mother into the hut. Someone pushed me into the river, her mother replied, as she revealed how she struggled to survive until one girl jumped in and saved her. Her mother revealed how the girl took care of her and led her back to their hut. Akuna was so happy to see her mother but was worried that they were still in danger. She believed that it was not a coincidence that someone poured a liquid in her eyes to blind her and also tried to drown her old mother. Akuna then decided to hide her mother in an undisclosed location with someone she trusted with her life. When the rich man visited that evening, Akuna told him that her mother had returned. He was so happy to hear the news and asked what had happened to her. Akuna narrated the whole story to him 
as she told him that her mother saw the face of the person who tried to drown her but had refused to say until they got to the king's palace. The rich man stayed with Akuna for a while and returned back to his house. Akuna then decided to get to the root of everything that had happened. She pretended to still be blind as she walked around the village telling some villagers that someone tried to drown her old mother. She went on to say that her mother survived and caught a glimpse of the person's face. She also told the villagers that she was in possession of an item belonging to the person who made her blind and that she was going to take the item to the king. In situations like this, once a crime is committed in the village and the case is brought before the king with physical evidence, the king would hand the evidence over to the chief priest who would present it to the gods. The gods would then make the owner of the item mad after finding the person guilty of the crime. And since madness cannot be hidden, the person behind the crime would be exposed for the whole village to see. However, in cases where there is no physical evidence but someone saw a person committing a crime, once the allegation is brought before the king, the king will summon such a person before the chief priest who would ask the accused if they truly committed the crime. If they say the truth, a verdict of banishment would be pronounced by the gods in extremely serious cases, but if they lie, the gods will strike the person dead before the whole village. Once Akuna had finished telling a few villagers about what happened to her mother and herself, she returned home and banked on the power of gossip and rumor. Late that night, Akuna was all alone in her mother's hut when she heard some noises outside. She hid in a dark corner as she saw someone tiptoeing into their hut. Akuna kept silent as she watched the person moving around the hut in complete darkness and the next thing she heard was her trap snapping. What followed was a sharp scream of pain. Akuna quickly rushed to check who it was and to her surprise, she saw the rich man. He had a knife in his hands and Akuna could not understand what was going on. It has been you, she said in disappointment as tears began to drop from her eyes. What did we do to you, she screamed in pain as the rich man began to narrate how he had held a grudge for Akuna's family for over a decade. When Akuna's father was still alive, the rich man at the time was a very poor boy looking after his sick father. Akuna's father was a very popular herbalist then, so the poor boy brought his father to Akuna's father's hut for healing, but Akuna's father turned him away saying, that he should take his father to another herbalist as he was extremely busy at the time. The poor boy did as Akuna's father instructed, but by the time he got to the other herbalist's hut, his sick father had already died. Soon later, he heard that Akuna's father turned him away because his wife was in labor at that moment giving birth to Akuna. All these years, the poor boy resented Akuna and her family and promised to carry out revenge on all of them. He was the one behind Akuna's father's death many years ago, as well as Akuna's blindness and the drowning of her mother. When Akuna heard this, she was devastated as she could not believe that the enemy was close all this while. She took the matter to the king who banished the rich man from the village for all the atrocities he had committed. Many days later, 
Akuna and her mother were standing outside their hut when her mother suddenly said, That's the girl that saved me. Akuna turned and to her surprise, she saw the little girl she saved from the bullies a while ago. She thanked the girl for saving her mother and the poor girl smiled and said that she only kept her promise. Akuna was so grateful that in the end, justice prevailed and she and her mother lived peacefully from that day. The lesson to be learned from this story is that most times the enemy is closer than you think. In every situation, we should always ensure that we stand up for what is right and show kindness to others as a little kindness can go a long way in saving us from unforeseen circumstances. I hope you enjoyed the story. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. It helps us grow our channel. I'll see you in our next story. Bye.